please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, um, the uh, first order of business is uh, this morning, or this afternoon, gosh, where have I been? Um, we have guests here, and uh, I would like to introduce Mrs. Jill Weaver to address the board. Come on up. If it's okay, I, I'll just do it from there. <laughs> That's fine. Um, well, I just wanted to take this opportunity because I know with my husband being on Tippy Valley's um, board for a while that most of the time you guys always hear the problems and the issues that go on in a school system. And I just wanted to share something pretty great about Rochester Community Schools. And I apologize if I cry. <laughs> <laughs> These guys have seen me do this before, so. <laughs> um, and I'll try and be brief. On July 27th, and this is one week before our students started in school, but I got a phone call at Columbia and asking me if we would do a, an exchange student. And I kind of jokingly said, well, if you have any Ukraine students, you can send their profiles to us, and lo and behold, before I got home, we had four profiles to look at. But I did tell her I didn't think we would do it until we saw the profile of one Ksenia ship. And she wrote us a letter at the end of her application, and she ended it with, um, I already know I love you. So we had her, um, met her parents, on July 29th. The next day she left for America and was here on August the 3rd. So it was a quick change for her. August 4th was her first day at Rochester High School. The year's gone very well for her. She's made a lot of great friends. She's enjoyed her classes. And then on a Wednesday night in February, she came out with the dazed look on her face and she said, it's happened. And at first I was kind of like, what? And then it dawned on me, yeah, it's happened. And her um, country was invaded. And um, it's been rough since then. And we've had a lot of sleepless nights. She's had a lot of headaches, a lot of stomach aches. But I don't know how we would have gotten this through without Rochester school system, the teachers here, the administrators, and even our community who has embraced all of us. So I wanted just to thank you guys, not only to thank you, but to let you know what an incredible school system we have because of the individuals that are here. Um, I guess the other thing that I see is that through all of this, I always know good can come out of bad. And through all of this, you never know how you're going to react when something of a crisis starts. But it's shown me that our school, as a school, we have the right stuff and that when our trials come, they make us stronger. So I'd like to thank the teachers and the staff at Columbia and Riddle. I know most of them didn't even, don't even know Ksenia, but they have been so stellar for me in um, crying with me, uh, praying with me when I had no words. Luke and Jason here, they have helped me to find courage and they've given me time to leave school at a moment's notice when something needed to be done for Ksenia. 
Uh, Mr. Hawes has been awesome through this. I was, when I started doing this, I was afraid I was going to leave somebody out, but I had to name some names of the high school teachers that have just been incredible. Hope Shelly, I think I have texted her almost every day since that day in February, just to let her know what's happened, what kind of mood she was in, letting me know when something happened. Sandy Schaefer, Mr. Atkins, Mr. Atkinson, Mr. Stasiak, Mrs. Lowe, the counselors, Mrs. Brown and Mrs. Cipher, have just been so valuable during this time. They all have been. Probably one of the things that might surprise you the most, though, is some of the people that have helped her the most are our students. I'm so proud of them that they could stand up at a time like this and stand strong <coughs> and be the right kind of support that this girl has needed. Some of the standouts were Zoe Stewart, Lola Brady, Maddie Brayette, Macy Nelson, and Jude and Tessa Brooks. I know I'll leave somebody out. Even members of the Catholic Church have stepped up to help at times. But I just marvel at how this community has embraced this time, wrapped their arms around her, around Tom and I, and helped to make a horrible, horrible situation bearable and enough that this is what she wants to do next year. She wants to come to Rochester to school. So thank you to everybody that's sitting here that's helped and um, we look forward to graduation next year. Thank you. Thank you, Jill. That speaks volumes about our community and, and our school community and the way we hope that we can wrap our arms around every student in the Thanks for sharing that. We have uh, two other guests today, uh, Mayor Ted Denton and Mr. Joe McCarter, who've asked to um, address the board on a recent grant that we've received. Who's received? RTC's received a grant. <coughs> We're here to talk about the wonderful facility that we utilized that we think helped a lot to push this grant up over the top for RTC. Uh, but first of all, if I might, you recognized a lot of people. How about you and Tom? Let's give them a hand. Huh? had the pleasure of meeting this young lady and you know we got Memorial Day weekend coming up and mm -hmm. we had the ceremony at the courthouse yesterday and I always do some preparation I'll read different things uh, the greatest generation or I'll watch something on the TV or I'll look for famous quotes one thing I watched in preparation and many of you have seen this movie Schindler's List about Oscar Schindler who was the man in, uh, he was a part, member of the Nazi party, but he was a real humanitarian. He was a factory owner and through whips and sliding and things, of the fugled eat to the Nazis, he was able to bring 5,000 Jewish people out of the Warsaw ghetto into his factory and the, the pretext of <laughs> making them essential workers, save them from going to Auschwitz. And that ended up being the start of the Jewish population uh, for, for in Poland. And there were just magnitudes of, of people who came after these 5,000 Jews that he saved. So one person can make a difference. And you and Tom are making a difference. Uh, back on November the 3rd, we, uh, we had the opportunity to uh, showcase what we called Rochester Day. And this was a day that uh, we invited several uh, people from the state 
in the in the world of economic development. And it was people, some of these people had never been to Rochester before, didn't even know we existed, go figure. But they were, uh, they were uh, people uh, like uh, Denny Spinner, the president of Okra. Now Denny had been here before, but he hadn't been here a lot. Uh, Jerry White, also with the Okra group. We had Ernie Holtry, who was here, the director of Indiana Broadband Office. We had David Baer here with the IEDC, Indiana Economic Development <coughs> Council. And we had Sarah Salisbury here with the IEDC. And Sarah was an interesting person to have here. Sarah's job at the state is to take all of the inquiries that come into the state of Indiana for a site recommendation. And she tells these people who are wanting to go someplace, build a factory or whatever, where the best possible places are to go. She took copious notes this day. We met, uh, we met in the auditorium, and right away, folks, anybody who was a naysayer on the auditorium, these people walked into the auditorium, and it was a wow factor. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jana presented, uh, Joe was the main presenter, talking about RTC and what had been done in the world of broadband and fiber, and uh, Jillian uh, Kramer, Jillian Smith, she spoke as well from the chamber perspective about Rochester, and then I spoke about tying, tying everything in. Afterwards, Sarah Salisbury, the site selection lady, went to several places in the community, site-wise, with our two Board of Works members, John Little and Rick Figlio, and again, made copious notes and asked several questions. David Baer with the IEDC went with us over to visit with the Foundry, spent uh, over an hour there talking about their situation and things that they'd like to see coming from the state. So it was a great day, but I know Joe was very impressive because we got a lot of comments about RTC. It's amazing, I, you know, a community like this, how we take a lot for granted and we we keep our light under a bucket a lot of times. So this was a, a great start in letting these people know who make decisions at the state level, who we are and what we're about. Just want to thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, like I said, we started right out with the wow factor. Um, just like to introduce Joe now to kind of go on and tell you a little bit about the fruits of that venture and the grant situation. Yeah, I'd like to echo the mayor's comments. Um, that auditorium really <coughs> set the day up. Um, obviously, the folks from the state, they, they get out quite a bit, but uh, they were extremely impressed with that facility and to be able to bring them into a facility like that and showcase our community. I'd also say that Jana did a really nice job of not just talking about the school system and all the great things the school is doing, but also our community. Uh, between she and Jillian, it really set the stage for us, not just the pros of our community, but also some of the needs. Um, so we were successful. Uh, we actually were more successful than we thought we would be as far as the number of grants we got. We got less money than we had asked for, but we got enough money that we think the project's doable. And uh, whether we think it is or not, we're now on the hook to do it. So, uh, but um, in Fulton County, um, we got four grants and we were funded at 60%. Um, so the total bill for Fulton County will be around $22 million. Um, you know, some people say, well, why have you done it before? Well, $22 million, the payback period on that is about 32 years. Um, I never thought um, on my watch we would have the opportunity to build the county out just a quick history lesson. Once grants started to become available about five years ago at the federal and state level, they were all done on census block. And because of our fixed wireless product, we cover an address or two within about every census block in the county. But as the school well knows, there's about half of the county that we can't cover because you have to have line of sight. But because those grants were all based on census block, we couldn't even apply. Okra and the state in round three of Next Level did something very smart. They saw this as an issue, so they broke the awards down to address level. 
So we actually had to apply for every address that we couldn't reach with our fixed wireless. And that was just under 4,000 addresses. <clears throat> we ended up getting challenged on about 400 from other providers. We can't challenge the challenger. Uh, if we would have, or could have, we would have because they can't, they're not serving them obviously. So we got funded for 3,600 addresses. Um, there will be four uh, build outs. We will start in Lighters Ford. Um, we have not signed any contracts yet. They have not been presented to us by the state. But once we sign those, the clock starts and we have 24 months to finish this bill. And that is going to be a challenge, but we're going to do everything we can to do it. So we'll start in Lighters Ford and probably work counterclockwise. Uh, we'll have a hut in Lighters. It's actually in town. Uh, we bought a piece of land uh, with the hut existing. Uh, the county has been generous and uh, worked an arrangement with them for uh, property in Kiwana or just outside Kiwana. So that'll be our second. Um, and then just go on around. Uh, Akron will probably be the rural Akron. We've already got Akron built, but rural Akron will be the last. Um, the other exciting thing about this is if you look around us, K County RMC is building out their entire customer base. Miami Cass RMC is building out their entire customer base. Through a partnership with uh, Marshall County REMC, uh, we're building out a lot of rural Marshall County. And then uh, Lightstream to our west is building out a lot of Pulaski. RTC was also awarded uh, a small grant for a section of Pulaski which mirrors Fulton County REMC's coverage, at least in the Pulaski. So anyway, just wanted to kind of share an update. Um, we don't have plow on the ground yet, but we hope as soon as those contracts get signed, we will. Um, there are concerns right now, obviously supply chain, which affects everybody, is an issue. Um, locating is an issue right now around the state, um, but we're really excited about the opportunity. I think it's going to serve Fulton County uh, very well, um, and uh, hopefully long term will serve us well. Any questions? Congratulations. Thank you, and thanks for all your help. No luck. <coughs> right. Well done. If I could just take one more minute of your time. We've got several projects going on at the city, and one of them, if you've been keeping track of what we've been about, we're taking on the revamping and redoing of uh, Minnow Creek going through Rochester, through our city limits. Part of that is going through Middle School over there. <laughs> and the bridge, the infamous bridge. <laughs> yeah. Bridge that um, only fifth graders. And it, it's, it's overall, uh, we've had some engineering work done on it, and we're, we're going to have to take it on in three phases. We're working with Okra on a grant, about a $600,000 grant for stormwater utility uh, work. And uh, we're doing some things right now that are preliminary things that are going to help with the condition of this creek right away. And uh, over then, the next three years, we'll just rebuild the whole thing. But I brought our street superintendent, Dwayne Border, along just to tell you what's going to affect Riddle School over there real quickly, if you don't mind. Sure. <clears throat> First of all, I apologize. I was at the dentist earlier, so if I start slurring my words, don't. <laughs> sure. <But>. sure. <laughs> Skeeter, <laughs> Skeeter, we can breathalyze. Uh, <laughs> anyway, and I know, Jan, we've talked on the phone about this, but um, Actually, uh, in June, we're going to be uh, upgrading Minnow Creek from 8th Street out to, uh, well, through 3rd Street. Um, we are actually uh, doing this in a joint effort with the county. Um, we're working with them to replace the culverts at 6th Street, at behind Riddle School, and also at 3rd Street. And they're actually going to uh, deliver the pipes tomorrow. So behind Riddle School, tomorrow morning when you come in, there'll be some big culverts there. So um, that work will start, like I say, in June. Uh, behind Riddle School, we'll be taking uh, the fence and all that down and the gate and uh, the blacktop, tearing all that out, replacing it, and then we'll put that all back the way it was. So um, that's the school's part of that. and then. What we're doing is increasing the size of the culverts. Right now, the outlet at 8th Street is six and a half feet in diameter. And for some reason, when the rest of that was done, they put smaller pipes downstream, and that doesn't work that way. It's supposed to go the other way. So uh, we'll be replacing those with bigger pipes to handle all that water, and, and that'll take care of some of the problems we've had along there. So that's where we're at with that. So if you have any questions. 
I don't have any questions, but I do appreciate your constant communication. It's been wonderful to hear from you and to know the plan and then be able to share out with Luke at Riddle for those expectations. So thank you for that. Yep. It's made it really easy for us. Yep. Thanks. The bridge has changed considerably since I was at Riddle School. It used to be a wooden slat bridge and you had to be in the fifth grade to go on the other side of the bridge, so it was a big, fat, hairy deal back then. And we weren't, could there, ask, weren't there minute men there at one time? <laughs> that was when you were there. Okay. I was all the home Trying to run in. Okay. <laughs> we appreciate, uh, Dwayne, we appreciate you coming in. Uh, you know, sometimes this is hard for me because as I look around the room, I, you know, went to school with Kathy at, at uh, Wilkinson and I went to school with Dwayne and you know, I know a lot of these people. And it's just, it's just kind of fun for me to see all these folks doing great things and continuing to grow our community. So, um, in lots of different ways, but uh, we appreciate all you do. All righty, moving on. Uh, item D, consent items. Approval of the minutes from the April 18th, 2022 regular session and uh, approval of the minutes from the May 3rd, 2022 study session. Um, did you finally get a copy of that? Yes, thank okay. you. Okay, all right. And uh, does, do any board members have questions over that, um, either one of those? Okay. Any comments from community members about the recent um, board minutes? At this time, I would uh, entertain a motion to approve both the uh, minutes from April 18th, 2022 and from the study session on May 3rd, 2022. So moved. Thank you, Jenny. Second. Okay. Casey, we we'll go with Casey. I heard her first. All right, all in favor of approving the minutes? And the motion passes one, two, three, four, five, two, zero. Okay. Um, the next agenda item is the financial report. Todd? Okay, in April, in the education fund, we had receipts of $974,539.37. Expenses of $804,918.05, and we transferred $150,000 to the operations fund. Our cash balance at the end of April in the education fund is $1,231,353.32. Debt service fund, <coughs> excuse me, we had receipts of $5,891.39. There were no expenses in April. The cash balance at the end of April is $1,2,917.32. And in the operations fund, we had receipts of $9,512.50. The transfer from the education fund of $150,000. Uh, we had expenses in the operation fund of $431,871.62. Cash balance in the operations fund at the end of April is $719,097.48. Thank you. Are there any um, questions or concerns about the uh, funds reports from Tom? Funds, claims, and payroll. Are we uh, at payroll yet? Sorry. Just a double check on the operations fund. Um, the expenses were a decent amount more this month, but it looked like in the um, approval of claims that we had that the iPads were paid for. Yes, okay. yeah, that was that was the most significant a, check. Uh, a, a reimbursement of I think that grant was thirty thousand dollars. Okay, so like one hundred fifty or something came out of. Yes, we had to pay for like the uh, operations. A little bit of it. But the devices themselves, which is the 630000 that money will be coming next few months, so. Thank you. Okay. And next we have claims. Anything to share there, Todd? No. Okay. And then finally, the uh, approval of payrolls totaling $1,001,000. Two hundred three dollars and eighty-four cents. 
Any questions about that? From the board? From the community? Um, if we could have a motion to approve the funds reports, the claims, and the uh, <coughs> payables as presented. I appreciate that. So moved. Thank you, Joe. Second. And Jenny, thank you. All in favor? And that motion passes five to zero. Next, we have student and stakeholder focus, and we have the um, donations. Uh, it never it never ceases to amaze me how kind and generous uh, our our community is towards our schools. Uh, for May 2022, we have Rochester Community School Corporation in the amount of $204.30. Purpose Corporation uh, donated by Kroger, 45 households contributed. Is that from the, the, round the roundup? Okay, good. good. Columbia Elementary, $36 for upcoming field trips from Kristen Gentry. Stacy Barkman, um, what school? It doesn't say what school. For prom, I assume it's the high school. Yeah. Uh, $200 for prom, and that is from Stacy Barkman. Rochester Middle School, $5,000 for a new volleyball system, and that's from the Booster Club. So uh, that's going to be put to good use, I'm sure. Any questions about the donations? Uh, there, are, there are more that came in. Oh. Oh, I apologize for that. So this is where I printed it out. So we'll okay, up. This is where thank you. Sire's Eye, $277.08 for the April 2 comedy show from um, for Rochester School Corporation. So thank you for that. Sire's Eye, $55 paper pulp donation for Mrs. Funk's art class. Uh, Riddle Elementary, $350 jump rope for heart, um, donated by the American <coughs> Association. Real Elementary, $6.80. Loyalty donation from Casey's General Store. Key Club, $25 in memory of Lisa Malott Brown, and that was donated by Jenny Adams. Rochester Community School Corporation, $1,000 vape education class, and that is from Drug Free Fulton County. Now, are there any questions about the donation? It, it ends up, and I should tally this up, but in a year's time, it's amazing the dollars and donations that are, are sent our way. So we're very grateful for that. Do I have a motion? Could I please have a motion to uh, approve the donations as presented? Come on. And all in favor of approving? And that motion carries five to zero. Next, action items. Oh, approval of an overnight field trip for the Rochester FFA to State FFA Convention June 14th through June 16th, 2022 in Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, we get copies of those sent to us via email. Has everybody had a chance to look that over? This is a, a common practice that Mr. Um, Pearson takes a group of students every year to this, and it's a very worthwhile um, opportunity for our kids. Any questions from the board? Any questions from the community, the audience? Could I have a motion to approve the overnight field trip for the Rochester FFA to the state convention in June? Thank you, Joe. And a second? Second. Thank you, Casey. All in favor? And that passes five to zero. The next is approval of an overnight field trip for the Rochester wrestlers to Brian Anderson Wrestling Camp June 26th to the 30th, 2022 at Manchester University. I have a question about that. And that is he, he put this uh, in here as an overnight field trip, but when I look at the um, the actual uh, paperwork, it said they'd be coming back and forth every day. So is it an overnighter or not? I was under the impression it was overnight. OK. 
Okay. Um, Kevin, did you say you were too? Yeah, it's over. It's overnight. They're, They're staying over. Take it, what three mini buses? Yeah, take the they take a couple activity buses. Yeah. Okay. Well, Katie, you did read. I mean, it says where will the group be housed and fed? We will be commuting each day to keep the cost down for the kids, so there will be no overnight housing. Yeah, that's the way I read it. So we're approving an overnight field trip where nobody's staying overnight. Right? <laughs> just check it. Just check it. I'm going to just mark that little part. <coughs> I mean, I understand that the purpose of the camp and it's all things, but I want to make sure that, that we're on the same page there. So if there's, if we're incorrect on that, let us know, would you please? Will do. Thank you. Any questions about that? I know they go they go to this on an annual basis too, don't they? They do. Yeah, they do. Yeah, I'm not sure because even number five says we have taken kids uh, to camp at least one overnight trip in the last 21 years. I have been head coach. Bryce and Tristan have taken kids to many overnight trips. Right. And so he's talking about overnight. I kind of need clarification. Number three, it says where will the group be housed and fed, and it says university dorms and dining halls. I wonder if that was maybe a cut and paste error. I mean, because it's typed. Yeah, you know, I'm wondering if maybe this isn't his computer and he just forgot to. Got the FFA one. And then who's RWC? Oh, the, is that the club? That the wrestling the abbreviation. Club, yeah. Okay, sorry. Well, the well, handwritten one is the football one, and they are staying overnight. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm yeah. Right. I That's okay. Save. It may be that traditionally they've stayed overnight, and so this is in his list of to get approved every year, and better to have approval and not need it than <laughs> to need it and not have it. I agree, Jenny. Yeah. So if you'll just clarify that, Lori, that'd be appreciated. All right. Any any other questions on the potential overnight field trip for the uh, wrestling club? <laughs> talks again about parents having their numbers, where they're staying, hour by hour breakdown. I bet that's I bet it's just a cut and paste area. Yeah. Okay. All right, yes, yeah. let's let's make sure that okay. All right. Any questions from the community? I assume they're not staying overnight, but we'll see. All right. Okay. Uh, board want, feel like we need to go ahead and move on this or do we need more information? I don't have an issue if it's overnight or not. I mean, I think it's a great program, so I mean, I just think. I agree, I'm just I just texted Clint, no, we will be commuting back and forth every day. Thank you for doing that, Hope, I appreciate that. Well, that cleared that up real quickly. All right then, let's let's approve a non-overnight field trip for the <laughs> Rochester restaurant. Um, uh, on June 26th to the 30th at Manchester University. So. Thank you, Casey. Second. Thank you, Jay. <clears throat> All in favor? Motion passes five to zero. Moving on, next item. Approval of an overnight field trip to the Rochester Wrestlers. Wait, why is that on the same page? Did I print the same page out twice? <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry, I gotta move to the next one. Number three, approval of an overnight field trip camp for the football team at Manchester University, and that is uh, for our board meeting, and their details are also on here. Did everybody get a chance to read through that one? That's the one that's handwritten. The Manchester football camp, that's what you're on. We're on Manchester football camp. Yeah, June 20th to the 23rd. June 20th to the 23rd, correct. Apparently nobody stays home in June, but that's okay. Nobody stays home in June, everybody goes camping. All right. Um, yes, and that is uh, June 20th to the 23rd, Manchester, and they will be staying over. Mm -hmm. Staying in the dorms. Staying in the dorms. Any questions on that? They'll be taking, what, 45 players? 40 to 45 players. Any questions from the community? Um, I'd entertain a motion for approval of the overnight field trip camp for the football team at Manchester University. So moved. Thank you, Jenny. Second. Thank you, Casey. All in favor? 
Again, the motion passes five to zero. The next one's gonna be a real challenge for all of us, and that is the approval of Mrs. Betty Martens being appointed to the library board. Do I need to leave the room? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, talk about me. It's all right, it's all right. <coughs> it's, uh, the director of the Fulton County Library, Andrea Steinbeck, contacted me and shared that Glenda Sager will not be um, seeking a third term uh, on the board of trustees there. It is our school board's uh, job to approve the to approve the appointees um, once they are sent to us. And Andrea has respectfully asked that Betty Martens be appointed to that position um, moving forward. She um, shared um, Mrs. Martens' involvement in the community, passion for reading and education, as reasons to appoint her to the to that board of trustees. At, at one time, didn't you all, do you always, do you hold a master's in library science as well? I do. Mm -hmm. I thought. Okay, I think she, I, I think she could probably handle it. All right. Um, any questions from the board? <coughs> any questions from the community? All those who are, uh, if I would approve a, or entertain a motion for the approval of Mrs. Betty Martins, being appointed to the library board. So moved. Thank you, Joe. <clears throat> Second. Thank you, Casey. All in favor. Thank you. Motion passes five to nothing. Congratulations, Mrs. Martins. Uh, I need some more stuff to do. <laughs> <laughs> I wondered. All right. Item number five under action items is the approval of bus driver contracts for the 2022-2023 school year. Um, I want to thank Kevin Reinhold for his work on this. He does a nice job of meeting um, monthly with the drivers and bringing any questions or concerns that maybe um, he needs uh, voice or input on over to Todd and myself. And with that, there was a common theme that came out of a couple of meetings in regards to uh, the drivers whenever we have inclement weather, when we don't uh, have school due to COVID, those types of things, how that impacts their overall earning capacity and the concern that they had in regards to that. Um, doing some research, there are very few schools, Kevin, if you uh, wanna chime in, you're welcome to do so, that offer drivers um, a contract. And uh, so we believe that this will help provide that support to our drivers as well as helping us be competitive and maybe even uh, be able to recruit drivers from other school districts. The um, contract itself is standard from the State Department. We would propose that we uh, approve a contract for 185 days of driving um, so that drivers are guaranteed that payment amount. School is only in session 180 days. The other five days would cover their mandatory training that they have prior to school starting that they have to go through. It would cover that time that we spend on opening day and also the hours that are spent in their um, meetings that they have monthly, any safety meetings they have, any bus inspection meetings, those types of activities that are required. So we felt that 185 days would be all encompassing of that and I would recommend uh, that the board approve this for the drivers. Uh, Kevin, we met with them, was it last week, two weeks ago? and shared the contract yeah. with them. Um, and they were very excited and very appreciative of the opportunity um, to be heard and to uh, know that we were working towards this. So there was a level, I believe, of comfort across the crew that this was going to, to do wonders for their department. Thank you. Yeah. Any questions from the board? Any questions from the community? Um, I'm looking for a motion for approval of the bus driver contracts for the 2022-2023 school year. So moved. Thank you, Casey. I'll second. Thank you, Jenny. All in favor. And the motion passes five to zero. Thank you, Kevin, for your work with the crew on that. Thank you, guys. Number six, approval of handbooks for Columbia and Riddle and Rochester Middle School. Those were presented to us at the study session um, last time on the third. So uh, any uh, concerns about that? Anything you guys need to add? All righty. So um, 
Approval of the handbooks, uh, a motion to approve the handbooks for Columbia, Riddle, and Rochester Middle um, would so be appreciated. Good. Thank you, Joe. Second. Casey. <coughs> All in favor. Motion passes five to zero. Approval of textbook rates for Columbia, Riddle, and Rochester Middle Schools. Working with um, Todd, we believe that uh, status quo uh, textbook rentals based on last year's prices, um, we are not adopting anything K through seventh grade, so those rates um, can stay the same. Um, once the board has the opportunity to, to discuss and to vote, then I'd like to share just a little bit about free and reduced lunch and the link to textbooks and how that's going to be changing in uh, academic year 2022-2023. So we'll let this unfold first and then I'll try to update you to the best of my ability of what's happening next at the state and federal level. Okay. Any questions about the textbook fees? I always like it when they can stay consistent. Helps families out. Okay, um, entertain a motion to approve the uh, textbook rental or textbook rates for Columbia, Riddle, and Rochester Middle School. So moved. Thank you, Jenny. Second. Thank you, Joe. All in favor? Motion passes five to zero. So, one of the things um, that we have been tracking. Um, at this point in time, we believe in academic year 2022-2023, there will not be federal grants for free lunches for all students um, in the district. We have not received official word on that, but it appears as if that's the direction that the federal government is leaning towards. So we want to make sure that we begin to communicate that out to parents. And I know that there were some social media blurbs that went out today. It'll be extremely important for parents that um, they fill out that free and reduced lunch form because that also then is applicable to uh, reduced fees in regards to textbook uh, materials and adoption. Those fees will be available July 1st. Unfortunately, we cannot um, hand those out prior to that. It's a form that comes from the, the government. It's one that we have to follow and be in compliance with. So July 1st, and hopefully that will coincide with what we're doing in regards to registration dates. Um, we know that that form and document can be overwhelming for parents, so there will be plenty of assistance um, at each of the building levels. Uh, food service can help with that as well, but just want to put this on parents' radars. Um, one, that we that, that grant's going away and meals will um, uh, be charged next year. And for those parents who feel that they qualify, so please reach out to principals, to the counselors, to food service, to our office, and we'll do the best that we can to help them through that process beginning July 1st. And we'll continue to update the community on that. Thank you. That kind of makes me sad. Makes, yeah. Yeah. And, and Tom, I haven't heard anything definitive. They're just telling us that that seems to be the direction they're leaning. Um, obviously things can change, but I feel that we need to update the community right now and make sure they're aware that that seems to be the direction so that they can budget and prepare for that. And then of course, if the grant comes through, um, all the better for everybody, but we want to make sure that begins to be placed on people's radars and budgets. I think it's one of those things there, it's in discussions, but who knows what path it's going to, yeah. it's going to take, so. Thank you for that information, Jane. Um, item number eight, approval of the changes to the technology handbook for the district. Scott, is there anything we need to be updated on there? Uh, just <coughs> what we talked about over the state session, just uh, current charges for MacBook and iPad repairs. <coughs> All right. Any questions from the board? Any questions from the community? I will entertain a motion to approve the uh, changes to the technology handbook for the district. So moved. Casey? Second. Joe, thank you. And all in favor? And the motion passes five to zero. Number nine, approval of the disposal of the bike rack at Rochester Middle School in preparation for the installation of a new rack. 
argument. <laughs> where, where is your bike rack? Right in front. I bet it's, it's always been. It's been there forever, and it's been there forever, which it's, tells us. It's lots of pieces are broken. Yes. And it's kind of discolored, so I'm gonna uh, fix that up. Kind of need that. Do we have a motion to approve to approve the uh, purchase of a new bike or disposal of the old bike rack so that we can get a new one? So, thank you, Casey. Thank you. Thank you, Jimmy. All in favor? Motion passes five to zero. And then we move on to the personnel report. I better check. I printed it out before we got updates. Were there any updates to personnel? Oh, yes. Okay, let me go back to that. I said that's the last thing on your list. The last thing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, well, see, I print mine out in large print. So that's okay. All right. Well, here I go. No, I'm just I can teasing make it bigger it so for you. I can make it happen. <laughs> All right. Recommendations for the personnel report. Kim Beal, CIA coach at Columbia Elementary, stipend twice a year. Stacia Conrad. CIA coach, Columbia Elementary, stipend twice a year. Michelle Broyette, CIA coach, Columbia Elementary, stipend twice a year. Joshua Wyant, <coughs> food service manager, Riddle Elementary School, hourly rate of $14. Ethan Trottier, pool maintenance specialist, hourly rate $20 as needed. Keely Skinner, bus driver, transportation department, route pay. Joanna T. Walt, summer supervisor, summer cruise, hourly rate plus $2. <coughs> Cheryl Greiger, summer supervisor, summer cruise, hourly rate plus $2. Abram Farah, RHS social studies teacher, 22 23 school year, $54,950 per year. See? Okay. RHS Summer School, Ryan Help, Language Arts, hourly rate. Eric Davis, Help, hourly rate. Charlie Schwank, Physical Education, hourly rate. Justin Pearson, Agriculture, SAE, hourly rate. Summer Intercessions, Ryan Help, Language Arts, hourly rate. Kenneth Hughes, Mac, hourly rate. Summer Intercession, Riddle Elementary. Lisa Coulter, teacher, hourly rate. Alexis McSherry, teacher, hourly rate. I read, summer school teacher, Riddle Elementary. Amy Freeman, teacher, hourly rate. Joanna Johnson, teacher, hourly rate. <coughs> summer intercession, Columbia Elementary. Melissa Belpedio, first grade, hourly rate. Kylie Freeman, kindergarten, hourly rate. Brittany Ross, special needs teacher, hourly rate. Chrissy Flynn. Special needs teacher, two days only, hourly rate. Michelle Yeager, instructional assistant, hourly rate. Summer reading program, Angie Smith, teacher, hourly rate. Jennifer Keller, teacher, hourly rate. Beth Brady, teacher, hourly rate. Natalie Damer, teacher, hourly rate. Retirement, Thurman Bradley, transportation department. Beth Burkett, Rochester Middle School Food Service. Bob Reed, Maintenance Specialist. Kathy Wilkinson, Rochester Community School Corporation Food Service Director. FMLA, Nate Kramer, April 29th to May 6th, 2022. Veronica Mendez, April 26th to the end of the school year. Athletic resignations, Elmer Roke, Rochester High School Boys Soccer. Resignations. Tony Stasiak, Rochester High School teacher as of June 3rd, 2022. Stephen Coleman, Building Tech for Learning Center Admin Building. Avriana Heishman, Columbia Elementary Instructional Assistant. And termination of Teresa Dovich. Any questions or concerns? Any, thank you, Jen. Anything from the community? like to request that we, um, someone propose a motion to uh, approve the personnel report as read. So moved. Thank you, Casey. Second. Thank you, Jenny. All in favor. Motion passes five to zero. Superintendent's business. 
um, before I share just a little bit that I have, I'd like to go through the principles and have them share um, their success stories from our last meetings, things that you're working on uh, to conclude this school year and anything over the summer that you might wanna share out and then what you need uh, from me specifically as well as from the board, if you would, please. So Jason, if you'd like to share out success, what you're working on and any needs that you might have moving forward. As you can tell by the attire, I'm on the uh, field trip circuit last <laughs> week. We just finished up today, so some of the good things that we've had going on. Um, amazing to be back in field trips, taking the kids. Uh, what's really been special about these last couple of field trips, um, this, this last week and, and so on, has been the parent involvement. Uh, we've had upwards of 50 to 75 percent of our parents participating with our kids, and that makes for a lot of people but it's really nice to have those parents with their kids at the events and, and taking them and doing things with them. Uh, usually we have around 30%. So I think parents are wanting to get out and be with their kids too. We, so we did the zoo, we did Fair Oaks, um, and we had the zoo come out for our pre-K. So all that stuff's just been successful. I got to mention our PTO. Um, they, they had a uh, carnival last Thursday at Columbia. Uh, they sponsored that and uh, it was a really big success fantastic turnout um, lots of really good activities for the kids to do beautiful weather um, so we thank them for that and uh, they're also going to be bringing out the uh, Kona truck that is that ice making machine truck Kona thing on ice. Kona ice yeah, on Friday or yeah on Friday of this week uh, for our kids uh, we've got some outdoor activities zebra zone for this plan like that so we're just going to kind of celebrate the year um, coming up so that's kind of what we've got coming up um, and as far as support, uh, just continued support from the board. Um, it's, it's been you know, fantastic these last couple of months. Uh, I know we've had a real kind of a, a rough year in terms of COVID and um, just having to make some tough decisions throughout this year. But uh, the support for, for us at the building level has, has been fantastic and uh, um, we, we greatly appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Um, at Riddle, we finished all of our state testing, so I learned done, NWA is done. Over since uh, last, um, echo what uh, Snyder said as far as the field trips, we've had tremendous parent support as well. We had the fourth grade head wax museum today, tons of parents back in the building. So it's just good this semester or this last quarter to see parents back in and a lot of support at our field trips. Um, We've got coming up, it's the end of the year, so um, tomorrow will be our last field trip. We've done two zoo trips and a down to Indy Children's Museum, the uh, third grade went. So weather permitting, we've got color run, field days, and carnival coming up. So uh, that's kind of what our, our last week will be. It's crazy. And anything from the board, uh, tis the season to be hiring, so put the word out. <laughs> We're, we're open for business here at Rochester, so any recruiting you can do, send it my way. And Wednesday we have our artist, artist in residence program. We have a percussionist from Butler University that is going to be coming up and sharing with both elementaries on Wednesday. Thank you for sharing. Cassie? Um, I'd say one of the biggest things that happened since the last board meeting was um, all of our extracurriculars. We had a couple dances. Um, the fifth and sixth grade glow party dance. Um, we had about 180 kids to after school on Friday and they had a blast. <laughs> and there was a mess. <laughs> it was great. Um, it was fun to just watch them have fun with each other. Um, they spend an enormous amount of money on concessions and it was just a good time and fun to see. Um, that same day, during school day, we filmed our lip dub. So that will be coming out for everyone to <coughs> anticipate watching on Friday. And they did an amazing job. So the theme of that was neon, so it worked right well into our glow party on Friday. Then Saturday we had our 7th and 8th grade end of the year dance. And I can't tell you how many kids came up to me and the other chaperones at the dance thanking us for having <coughs> it. Um, how many parents reached out thanking us for having it. I think these kids I know these kids haven't had that opportunity in the time that they've been with us, so I was, it made my heart happy. It, I think the chaperones had just as much fun than the kids, and they danced the whole time, 
got pictures, had a candy bar thanks to Stacy Shayhalls and her amazing party planning. <laughs> so um, I, I'm so happy to work with the people I work with and from planning to organizing to setting up to cleaning up, it was great. It was great. So um, what we're working on now, finishing the week, we have activities every day. We have awards coming up, hopefully the color run with the fourth graders coming over. Um, we have dodgeball tournament, our big PBIS day, our last day, water balloon fly, fight, dodgeball tournament, and all kinds of craziness to finish the year. I currently have no openings for next year, which is a stark contrast to last year. So I am celebrating that as well. What I need from you guys, I'm going to echo what Jason said. It's been amazing to have your support this year. So that's all I need. Thank you. Yeah. From the two middle schoolers I know, the, the fifth and sixth grade person said when asked about the dance, the word fun was used no less than six times in the discussion. And then the, the, more formal dance, it was just a really good time and everybody looked great and we had a really good time. Good. So, well done. I mean, that's what you want is the kids to come away thinking Absolutely. this was awesome. So, I think they all did. Thank you. Great. More on behalf of the high school. Yeah, Oscar's actually uh, watching his daughter in sectional softball tonight. So, he sent me as, and that is where he should be. So, um, I'm going to fill in for him tonight. So, some successes that we had. We had a, we hosted a job fair. It's kind of been a brainchild of mine since I got this job and haven't been able to do it. Um, we had over, we had 33 businesses there, and I know of several kids who got summer jobs and even some seniors who got long-term jobs out of it. We got great feedback from the businesses and from the students and some really interesting comments on things that they would like to see us uh, do in the future, and I think that that is a good thing that we're going to continue. Um, we had the prom safety presentation, and Judge Heller and Robert Chofson and Travis Heishman and Tom Butler came in and did, and that was really um, very good. And then uh, Mrs. Shally and Mrs. Hoover put on an amazing prom for the kids. We had over 200 students. Um, I kind of feel the same. Like, I feel like our kids have been kind of locked up for a couple of years, and it was a really, it was just really neat to see kids who um, were just excited to be out, and I think that kids who wouldn't normally attend a prom went to prom and had a great time, so that was really fun. We hosted the 8th grade reality fair. The 8th and 9th grade uh, went to Washington, D.C. I got to be a part of that trip, and it was amazing. Um, we graduated our juniors and seniors from the Fulton County Youth Leadership Academy. We just had our POE downhill derby, and we had minimal injuries. So <laughs> we did have a few, but they were minimal. So that's that's win. What's um, POE? I'm sorry. The principles of engineering. Okay. So they build cars and race them down the sledding hill, and only one. <laughs> it's a it's a plus. That's a plus. Um, we hosted our underclassmen awards. <laughs> and then Friday night, we had Senior Honors Night, which is always just a really amazing night to see um, the work of the seniors and a culmination of a great career, and then the generosity of the community and of the Fulton County, um, what's it called? Community. The Community <laughs> Foundation, thank you. So we had, we don't have the full number yet, we're still working on that, but we know from the foundation we had over $53,000 given out. Friday night, and we'll have double that when we add in the local scholarships. So that's pretty amazing. Today, the seventh and eighth grade had their end of the year breakfast, and then the seventh grade got to tour the high school. Um, Oscar found out these numbers today and wanted me to share them with you. Um, we had a lot of dual credits earned this year, more than we thought. We gave out 150 dual credits to the freshmen. The sophomores were 443, juniors 1,035, and seniors 1,088. Mm -hmm. So we thought that was really impressive. Uh, what's coming up? Graduation. We are full on in graduation mode. The gym is shut down. Stage is up. We're ready. Uh, senior breakfast, which is one of my favorite things. Uh, eighth grade has a fun day planned for the last day of school, and the underclassmen get to take their exams. So I'm really looking forward to that. And then what we need from you guys, just we are just hoping you can all join us for graduation as it is just a really special night as you all know. So that's all from high school. And as she talks about uh, graduation, one thing I learned from Dennis Eller, the gym needs to be at meat locker temperature <laughs> prior to and then you lock those doors down and you're good for 
good for the ceremony, so thank you. Jane, I did want to say I forgot to mention Jen and I, through Fulton County Leadership, did the Coloring Rochester project, and those coloring books are going to be delivered tomorrow. So we'll be passing out coloring books to all of the elementary kids at Columbia, Riddle, and the fifth grade at Middle. Um, all the teachers will get a copy. Any of the civic sponsors that didn't have to pay but were just in the coloring book, they'll get a copy. All the businesses will get several copies. So those coloring books will be everywhere. So can you tell just a little bit about the coloring book, the, the principle behind it, so that everybody sure. understands? So a lot of times kids don't realize people they see and what they do. And um, the hope is through the chamber, as well as um, through teachers and students, just get the word out about what's in Rochester, who's in Rochester, what we do, just to help kind of promote the area. Um, we're hoping it continues after us. It was our project this year for Fulton County Leadership, and we're hoping that it continues. Um, but I think we ended up with 84 pages in the coloring book. Yeah, so it, it's it's pretty cool, and it was fun to watch the proofs come in and kind of laugh at the way I looked for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but, I saw I saw a preview of Mrs. Vance's, and I'm just going to let that, for those of you that might understand what I'm wearing here today, she on hers is riding on an elephant. <laughs> so, as a UK fan, I just don't get it. Uh, <laughs> but that's, that's what she's doing. So. There's also included in the coloring book is a crossword of information about Rochester. There's some fun pages. Um, it, the fox is the um, mascot of coloring. Um, color my town. Thank you. So we worked with him. It's, it's out of Fort Wayne. Um, and he's, his name is Alan Mitchell, and he's come and met with us. He's went and met with business owners, and then we helped um, get all the pages together. So we're looking forward to passing those out. Lauren was also oh, on our Lauren's team. here. I forgot <laughs> Lauren was here. Lauren's <laughs> <laughs> on our team as well. Yes. So it was the three of us and one other, um, and he works at Pipe Lumber. Jeremy. I appreciate the diversion. That was well done. <laughs> <laughs> Just very quickly, I want to remind um, the community and also all of our faculty and staff that the parking lot located between the middle school and the high school will be shut down beginning June 6th. So there won't be any access or drive through access um, as we undertake that project. Uh, the buildings will both be open. We just ask that you use alternative entrances and you can talk to the principals and administrators there. They will be open, but we will be um, completely shut down to foot traffic as well as uh, vehicles traveling through there for everybody's safety. I want to thank this team for a tremendous year um, and for your support and your leadership within the building. So thank you for all you do and all that you're continuing to do. And I thank you to the board as well. It has been a tremendous end to this year. And we have uh, some meetings already planned for summer. I sent out a couple dates at the end of the day today, and I think that they already are kind of rolling their eyes at me, but uh, we're going to launch some things this summer and, and be ready for a successful start next fall. So I think a sincere thank you to everybody. Any questions or comments from anybody in the community? Anybody on the board? I, I, just a couple, real quick. First of all, I am so thankful that we have so many in this room, part of our school, that chose to be a part of the Leadership Academy. Whether you were voluntold or not, <laughs> it, is, it, it is such an important um, part of our community and I think that it, especially for us in education to see and meet other people in the community to do that. Um, but it's a lot of time um, from a job that is already big and so the fact that you took the time to do that, um, I, I really appreciate that. That shows leadership um, and the connections that you're building are very valuable. So for our new leadership grads this year, Lauren included, and then our post, um, our alums too. And also, um, if this has been a really hard year. You know, I don't know if there are ever any easy years in education. And, and the first year, of, you know, the, the end of a year and a half ago, that was, or two years ago, that was tough. Last year, it was tough, but I think maybe this year was even tougher. Just that drag and you all have done such a wonderful job and i know we all really appreciate that it you you're taking on the stress of the students in your building the staff in your building everybody's just done <laughs> and i hope you all really get some time to rest this summer i hope your staff get some time to rest this summer 
and we genuinely appreciate all that you do, all that you're doing for the students of the community because that's the heartbeat of the community at large. And you know, I'm a little misty about it too because as Jan and I have graduates this year, and plus I always, the elementary people have my heart, that they never get as recognized on graduation day, but it, it, without Columbia and Riddle people, there wouldn't be these graduates. And so we, we are thankful for all of those people who have poured into those kids, our kids. Anything else? I echo what Danny said. She's absolutely right. You guys all deserve a break. I hope you get some time off this summer and go do something that has nothing to do with education because you need it. <laughs> and at that, uh, we are adjourned. Thank you all. Have a great evening.